Uh, first, have a look at uh, what XConnect is, because I think it's important to get the terminology right here. So XConnect is, is not a server role, it's a service layer that sits in between XDB and any client that wants to read, write, or search experience data using the XConnect client API. And when we say XDB, we use it as a term for any services that process and store experience data. So Think of this as a separation of concerns in that you shouldn't be accessing data directly from XDB. You should always be going through XConnect. Um, all XConnect APIs are based on OData. Uh, there's currently two services or endpoints, if you will, collection and search. The collection and search both rely on the collection model which define all the CLR types, any facets and events of the experience data. And you can, of course, extend this default collection model to add your own contact facets, your own interaction facets, or your custom events. Yeah. So, the architecture of marketing automation. Um, this is a... Uh, a little bit simplified, but it, it, it highlights the, uh, uh, the important bits and pieces of uh, what's, in, what's important to marketing automation. Um, so when we are looking at marketing automation, there's sort of two parts that are important. There's the XM and the XPF part. XM is the world you're used to. Uh, this is where we have the CM role, the CD role, and on the CM role, you have the campaign campaign designer or the marketing automation UI. And on the CD, you have the uh, live event watcher. We'll be coming back to the live events in a, in a while. Um, but on the XPF side, we have um, XConnect. Um, and uh, part of XConnect is the reference data service. This is where all a second. Thomas, I think you need to mute yourself. Thanks. Uh, part of X, uh, XConnect is the reference data service. This is where all definitions are stored. So whenever you save a campaign in the marketing automation UI, this is pushed to the reference data service, which in turn pushes it to the reference data database. We also have a couple of API endpoints, namely the marketing automation operations and reporting endpoints. Um, and we have an XConnect plugin or service plugin, which is uh, responsible for validating that any data that is pushed to the collection is uh, if it's of any interest to the marketing automation engine or not. If it's a successful add or update of a interaction, for example, uh, or a contact or an in, an, a facet, it will add a work item to the automation processing pool. Then the marketing automation engine, which is also brand new. This is um, constantly, or not constantly, but in pulses. It's uh, processing any work items from the marketing automation processing pool. The engine is a standalone application, and, and it can run as a Windows service. You can run it uh, in, as a console application, which is very useful for debugging. You can also run it as an Azure web job if you prefer. Um, we also have a version of the engine running on the MA or marketing automation operations endpoint in order to process live events. Then the final piece of the architecture, which was added in 901 is the message bus. Um, Contrary to popular belief, this is not part of EXM. This is part of the platform. Um, the message bus builds on Rebus, which is an open source um, uh, message bus implementation. Uh, it provides asynchronous communication, of course. And inside core, it's so far right now only used by EXM. But it solves a general problem that uh, Sitecore has had for many years, which is 
how do you communicate between roles, for example, the CD and the CM, or in this case, the marketing automation engine and the CM. Um, as I said, it's only used by EXM right now, but you should definitely expect other parts of the platform to uh, be using this as well in the near future. Right. So um, now that we have uh, gotten a little bit of an overview of the architecture, let's look at some of the ways that you can customize um, marketing automation. We will be looking at uh, three or two points here, uh, conditions and custom activities. You can also change the uh, configuration of marketing automation. Uh, as David mentioned, for example, to scale up or out the engine. Uh, you may also want to adjust the priority of work, for example, in order to let the engine know that your specific custom activities has to be higher of a higher priority than any other activities or vice versa, or however you prefer, really. Uh, I won't be covering it in this talk, though, but uh, everything is documented, and you can, of course, just reach out if you need any help. So. conditions or rules. Um, the um, rules or the conditions are used in marketing automation for specifically the uh, campaign entry trigger and listeners as well as decision points. The conditions are using the new Psycho framework rules engine, which is also used uh, by XConnect. And uh, some of you are probably wondering, why did we introduce this new rules engine? We already had one. Why do I need to learn another API? And the reason for that is, again, we, we want things to be non-web. We want, want things to be omnichannel. And the old rules engine was very tightly bound to the cycle kernel and the content tree, which the new one is not. Um, so the new engine is designed to be very portable, it's very slim and very specific. It does one thing and one thing only. Uh, and on the right side of this slide, you see a, an example of a very simple condition. Um, we have the DI rule execution context, which is injected. This is the context under which your rule is running. This context, context allows you to extract certain facts about the, um, about the execution. Um, and these facts are pieces of information that the host will inject for you. And that might, for example, be a contact as we see in this case. So in marketing automation, as I mentioned, we use these uh, conditions in several places. As you can see from this screenshot, we use it in the entry trigger. We use it in a listener. In this case, it's a gold triggered listener. And finally, we use it in a custom listener in this case. So um, going back to the facts that I mentioned, um, you can extract the contact as a fact, of course. We need access to that in most cases. But there are a few additional facts that you can extract, namely the interaction. One thing to make note of is that this is not present if the context under which you're executing this rule under is a facet being updated. So make sure you check for that, validate that. Uh, the other fact that you can extract is the eye contact processing context. This gives you access to the current enrollment and also any custom values on that enrollment. Custom values are just a, a dictionary of strings where you can get and set. This might be valuable later on for you. Um, you also have access to a couple of services, the XDB context. This is the XConnect client. So you can read additional data from XConnect if required. Just make sure that you pay attention or that you are careful about this because obviously querying XConnect requires a uh, a request, an HTTP request. So you don't want to do this if you, this is an activity that is executed very often. Um, 
So be careful about that. The same goes for the other services, of course. Um, these are the definitions, the taxonomies, and the reference data client. Definitions give you, give you access to goals and events and other stuff within the marketing control panel. Taxonomies, taxonomies from the marketing control panel. And finally, the reference data client gives you access to any reference data. Right, then the other piece, which is uh, only related to or only specific to uh, marketing automation is the custom activity types. So a custom activity is made up of two parts. We have the campaign designer and the actual activity implementation. So if you refer back to the uh, diagram of the architecture from earlier, the campaign designer is what goes on the CM. That's the UI a bit, it's what the marketer will see. It's, and it consists of any, all the front end code and items. And then we have the actual activity implementation, which is just pure C sharp. Um, and it's just an implementation of I activity. And I'll get back to that in a bit. So as far as the UI part is concerned, um, similar to the, the all of uh, marketing automation, um, the activities are built in Angular. Uh, marketing automation, the UI bit part is the first component in Sitecore to be created in Speak 3, and it's everything is based on Angular, um, as is the UI for any custom activities. Uh, so this allows you to use any Angular plugins that you want to. It's Everything is written in TypeScript, uh, so you can use NPM and Webpack and whatnot, whatever you prefer. Uh, there is an example on the doc side on how to um, implement this and we are also uh, and david uh, stop me if, uh, if i'm saying something i shouldn't but we are also uh, looking at implementing some sample activities that uh, will hopefully make it much easier than it already is um, there are three things you need to be aware of um, one is of course you need to do the uh, the, the front end bit, but you also have to create some items. Uh, specifically, you have to create the actual activity definition. Then you need to define any parameters also as items and any parts that are the outgoing uh, parts for this activity. That's also explained in the documentation. Moving on to the uh, backend part, um, it's really rather simple. Uh, you install this one NuGet package, XDB Marketing Automation Core API. Then you implement the iActivity interface, which requires you to implement a single method invoke. Uh, and this gives you the iContact processing context injected. Um, there is, um, as you can probably guess, support for dependency injection, uh, and we have a, a several services already uh, available for you to use, uh, but you can also add your own, of course. Um, a few um, notes, though. Um, any parameters of uh, your activities, they should be public properties with a public getter and setter. For example, in this case, it's a string. Otherwise, the, um, the properties will not be populated by the engine. So in this case, it's an activity where some message has been defined in the UI and you want that to be populated uh, when, you, uh, uh, when the uh, activity is invoked. And finally, the uh, engine or the activity, sorry, needs to return what the engine should do next. In this case, it says return a success move and move it to the default path. So the uh, services that you have available um, are listed here. Um, 
you have uh, the IXDB context. This gives you access to XConnect. So again, you can do uh, operations on XConnect, uh, reading all writing data even. Again, uh, think about the performance implications of this. Um, you have access to the definition manager factory, um, giving you access to the marketing operations API. We'll go back to the marketing operations API in a second. And then you have the taxonomy manager provider, um, the reference data client, the eye condition evaluate, evaluation service, and the activity enrollment operations. Um, so the eye context processing interface, this is um, the context of the actual enrollment. So you can, of course, get access to the contact being processed, the interaction being processed, if any. Um, you also have access to a dictionary, again, of custom values. So if you have um, the need to transfer some information or maybe a calculation from one activity to another, you can use this dictionary to do so. then the results of an activity should always be uh, either a success move, stay, exit, restart, or failure. A move indicates that the enrollment should, or that the engine should move the contact to the uh, next stage of the plan. Stay that it should stay here for a while. It's a good idea then to specify how long or when you want this enrollment to be evaluated again. Exit means the contact will just be flushed or ex removed from the campaign. And restart means the contact will be enrolled from the start in the campaign. Finally, failure indicates that something didn't go right and it should be rescheduled. So once you've created your activity, you need to register it as well. And you do so in an uh, XML or configuration file. You need to do so in two places. Um, one is the, the, actual, the actual engine, um, and the other is the version of the engine that is running on the marketing operations endpoint. But it's the same configuration file. Great, then web APIs and clients. So as I mentioned earlier, we have a couple of APIs that you can use, um, the operations API and the reporting API. The operations API is used to interact with marketing automation and perform operations on context and enrollment. The reporting API is used to report on the performance and state of a campaign. Both of these APIs have synchronous and asynchronous versions of all methods. Uh, and both of these APIs have no dependency on the sidecore kernel, so they can be used anywhere you want. They are hosted um, on XConnect, if this is an, is an XP0 deployment, and you have clients on the CM and the CD, which is the same instance in an XP0. But for an XP1 deployment, you have the APIs hosted on a dedicated role. To use these uh, APIs, you need to add a reference to either the operations client API or the reporting client API. Then you will simply inject the client and you're good to go. The operations API, as I mentioned, gives you access to, to operations on context and enrollments. Uh, specifically, you may choose to purge a contact from the campaign um, or the engine even. You can also enroll a contact directly into a campaign. Uh, and then in, in that case, entry conditions or the campaign entry trigger will not be evaluated or executed. This is a question we quite often get. 
how do I manually enroll a contact into the campaign. So this is already possible in the existing API. Um, with 902, we will be expanding on that and providing a UI for purging contacts, a single contact or multiple contacts from a campaign. Uh, we will also be providing an option to enroll a list of contacts into a campaign. But that's for 9.1. Um, then, as I mentioned earlier, we have live events now in Cycle 9. And traditionally, as many of you probably know, events were events on the interactions were not processed until the interaction was submitted. Um, that can be a problem in some cases, but this is solved by using live events as they are submitted immediately, um, allowing you to, for example, personalize or do personalization during the contact journey. Uh, of course, again, be careful about the performance because anything you're doing live comes with a cost. You can also manually register a live event using the uh, Marketing Automation Operations API um, or a batch of events even if you want. And then finally, we have the uh, reporting API. Uh, the UI already has uh, reporting built into it, but you can also extract this data yourself uh, using um, the reporting API. So you can get campaign statistics or extract the report for the campaign. Then, how do I integrate something with marketing automation? This is a question we are quite often asked. Um, I have some data or I have something I want to do in marketing automation, how do I do it? Um, Marketing automation can operate on all of the data that you have within XConnect. So instead of focusing on how do I integrate something with marketing automation, you should concentrate on integrating with XConnect. That way you can use it not only within marketing automation, but you can also use the data for personalization on the website, for example, or for segmentation or anything else. So please keep that in mind. Um, that being said, um, we have, of course, as you've seen, um, support for creating custom conditions that you may use in order to evaluate anything against your own data, your own facets maybe. You can also create custom activity types when you want to trigger something in your own component. Um, an example of this is the uh, send email activity that's, uh, that was added in 901 for EXM. Um, which is actually a custom activity, if you will. Um, but keep in mind that whenever you're creating a custom activity, activity and when this activity is evaluated, then you're no longer in the world of XM. So you don't have access to the master database, for example, and your services have to be registered in the IRC container if you need to use your own services. And as I said, the engine does support dependency injection, so it's, it's possible. And then finally, a few common pitfalls that we see. So the engine, when it processes a context, or a contact, con when it processes an enrollment, you get access to the contact. But we don't load all of the data for this contact because obviously this could have severe uh, performance uh, implications. So the contact loader is what determines what will be loaded. Um, and by def default, it's, uh, it's loading um, a certain range of, inter uh, of your the interactions, a certain specific interaction and contact facets. But you can, of course, change this, um, removing some if you prefer, adding your own, or uh, doing whatever you want. This is all uh, documented, and also you can just look in this file. But this is a question we quite often get. I created my custom activity, but my custom facet, I don't have that data available. Why is that? So be mindful of that. 
um, then always then also don't always load all the facets if you have a custom facet that you're using for example consider if it's really necessary to always load this cunt this facet for for all evaluations uh, instead you may simply use the xconnect client on the activity in order to load this facet for this context of course again this comes with a cost so you have to weigh pros and cons and then finally the number one question that we get is I need access to the master database. I have a psycho item and I need access to data within it. No, you don't. That that's not how the the that's that's because you're used to to, to the C X time world, you're used to engagement plans, you're used to everything being within Psycho. And while we cannot stop you from using the master database, we cannot stop you from adding a connection string and adding uh, dependencies to Sitecore kernel, we really strongly recommend that you do not because it does not scale and it will give you problems. So if you want to scale out the engine, if you are, you should always use the uh, built-in options that you already have available and uh, reconsider your design. <laughs>